Hey everybody, welcome back to Readers and Ritas at Home. My name is Gwen Reyes. I am the marketing, the marketing and events manager at Fresh Fiction and I am also your hostess for the weekend. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're so excited to get tonight kicked off with a bang, with an amazing uh, tradition that we always get to do in person. But since we're not in person this year, we are so excited to be able to translate our um, iconic scavenger hunt into a virtual version this year. Um, and so for us to be able to do that, we had to invite our scavenger hunt uh, queen extraordinaire, Kim Roberts back to join us. Um, she is going, I'm gonna introduce her and she is going to uh, chat with some of the authors that you'll be able to meet in the expo, which I know a bunch of you have been popping around in there. You'll get to learn a little bit more about them, see what kind of books they write, what they're doing with their scavenger hunt activity and how you can uh, participate more this weekend. Um, but in the meantime, while well, before we get started with that, I also just wanted to remind you guys about a little housekeeping. Um, we are going to uh, have lots and lots of fun panels and interviews all day tomorrow. We are gonna be joined by Kathy Maxwell, Christina Lauren, Kristen Higgins, uh, Jane Ann Krentz, Nalini Singh, and Dorinda Jones, as well as a panel by Elle Penelope, Jeffy Kennedy, Melissa Marr, and Kelly Armstrong. So so I know that if you are missing your authors in life, that this is a great opportunity to get your author fix and to also enjoy the weekend as a whole. So um, without further ado, Kim, are you ready? Do you feel ready to introduce some of our authors for the scavenger hunt? I am ready. Just okay, a great. warning to everybody, I have like really bad country internet. So Gwen's still gonna be there. If I pop out, that's, she'll reconnect me. Absolutely. I will be here controlling. I can still the hear, you just can't see me. <laughs> I'll be controlling all the strings behind the curtain, just like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> there you go. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to bounce out and I will let you handle this, Kim. Okay. So how we're going to do this is we're going to, um, each author is going to come up and I'm going to ask them a few questions and they're going to give you what they want you to, they're going to talk, talk in their interview, but then they're at the end, they're going to tell you what they want you to do for the scavenger hunt. And you need to post whatever they want you to post on social media, which will be Facebook, post it on Facebook with the hashtag R and R home. I think that's backwards. It is for me. Hope it's not for you. <laughs> um, it's, capital R and R, lowercase home. And then you'll tag the author. And um, then um, participate with every author that we're interviewing. You will be eligible for the grand prize, which is a coffee mug tree. And all the coffee mugs are special vanity mugs that only pertain for readers. So it, they're very cool. I kind of want one myself. Um, so we hope you guys enjoy it. And our first author is going to be Abigail Elwin. So we'll see if there she comes. There Hi. she is. <laughs> Hi, Abigail. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very excited. Oh, like, I love all those paintings. Are, are those your book covers on your wall? They're not. Those are Disney's. Those are all different Disney princesses in uh, Thomas Kincaid. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so I'm excited to have an author who writes different types for all different types of readers, you know, whether what or whatever mood I'm in, you know, whether it's sweet, sexy, or just full-blown sassy. Um, I love the, to experience them all, and you let us do that with all of your writing. That's so cool, because I can share them with anybody. So um, what, what do you find so rewarding about writing the different levels of heat? You know, it's, um, so as you mentioned, I write a lot of different, different genres. So I write in um, paranormal romance, Abigail Owen, I write uh, steamy contemporary as um, Katie Scott, and then I write sweet contemporary and Amish romance um, as Kristen McKenna. And with those, you know what it is, is that I 
I read all of them. I think I read every single genre there is in romance. Um, if it's got an HEA, I'm your girl. And because of that, I like to bounce around as an author as well, just because I like all those stories. I think everybody deserves a love story. Everybody deserves an HEA, and I want to read them all, and I want to write them all. So I think that's where it comes from. Yeah, I, I, I like to switch back and forth, you know, from each genre. To, it just makes it more interesting to me to go back and forth. I agree. And it's kind of like the way you watch movies or TV. You're not going to yeah. just watch you know, medical science ones, you're going to kind of bounce around and different things will catch your eye. So I, I like yeah. it all. I agree. So you have really vibrant covers on all of your books. I mean, they're gorgeous. And I especially love your Inferno Rising and Fire. Uh -oh. We might have lost Kim. So I think while she's trying to get back in, she had sent me the questions ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that question out for her if I can find it real quick. Hold on. Maybe she'll hop back on before we get there. Uh, not it. There we go. Um, she was going to ask about uh, The Rogue King and my first book in the Inferno Rising series. So, um, that's so good. I was just finishing the question for you. <laughs> Tell us about The Rogue King. <laughs> okay. So I love the covers too. This is the Rogue King and, and the covers are gorgeous. They're from Entangled and I love pretty much every single cover that comes from that publisher. They're amazing. And um, these are all dragon shifters. Um, the Rogue King in particular. So with the Inferno series, it's a combination of dragon shifters and phoenixes. And a phoenix is very rare and um, kind of sought after whichever king of the clans of dragon shifters is mated to a phoenix is the high king so it's very important to their kind of their whole political setup to have a phoenix and they phoenixes have not been around for 500 years so when a couple of phoenixes suddenly appear they fight over them so i have a lot of fun with these dragon shifters very cool I, okay see i like the political makeup of that that's very cool um, okay, so you also just released a sweet contemporary romance, holiday romance um, under the pseudonym of Kristen McKenna. Am I saying that right? Yeah, good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and it's titled Snowball's Christmas, that, and it takes place in a B&B. &B. So was there any specific B&B &B that you had in mind that helped you dream up this novel? I did. And actually, here, I'll show you that cover, too. This one's bright. So let's see, is that not the most adorable cover? Yeah. I love this cover so much. She's so sweet. So um, the, the bed and breakfast in it is, is based on a Victorian inn. And in that one, it's, you know, set in snow and mountains because I'm in Texas. Um, we don't really have snow and mountains, but I am also a Colorado girl. So that's where I get the snow and mountains from. But the the inn, there is an inn, um, a Victorian home that they turned into a kind of a B&B a &B and uh, for weddings and that kind of stuff. It's called Page House. It's in Georgetown, Texas, just north of Austin. And it's just this gorgeous, like they've redone it. It's just so beautiful with all of the original woodwork and the way the foyer goes up in the stairs. And so I'll, a lot of the layout and all of my experiences with that, I, I'm based on that house. Oh, that's very cool. See, I, I love when reality translates into fiction like that. That's very cool. I find that um, if I'm using something out of my own experience, the details are more real. There's a lot of research that you can do, absolutely, but and that helps. But it, it helps when you've got at least some little details you can pull from real life. Right. Okay, so I can't interview you without asking about you being an ex-professional skydiver. <laughs> I mean, seriously? You, you got to tell us what that entails. So um, I picked it up in college. Um, I joined my collegiate team. And then after college, I joined us. I wouldn't call it full professional, I, a semi-pro. We didn't have sponsors unless you counted the, own, you know, the money that we were putting into it and that competed against professional teams. And uh, I did formation skydiving, which was um, you work on a team and you pull specific formations out of a hat and each formation is a point and then you're timed and in a minute you do them over and over and over 
and the number of formations you get in the amount of time is um, more formations equals you do better. So that was, it was so much fun. I loved it. Okay. I miss it. <laughs> it, it. So like what was the most difficult formation you did or how many people? Um, I did four way, so it was a four person team. Um, I tried eight way, which is an eight person team, but that gets quite a bit more complicated. Um, I liked four way. Um, and the formations themselves were difficult, but what was tricky was you're moving in 3D and you're trying to go quickly from formation to formation to formation. And some of them are called pieces where you do the formation and then you spin and you either come back to the same formation or you come back to a different one. And so the spinning always like you're having to spin while staying level with each other while staying in close proximity. So yeah, it was complicated. <laughs> Fun. It's pretty dangerous too, but it's gotta be exciting. <laughs> it was, it was, I did it for years and then had my babies and was like, I need to take a pause on that while they're growing up. So yeah, there you go. That's very smart and very <laughs> conscious of you. Okay. So you're giving away your short story a ghost of a chance. Tell our readers what they have to do to get, in order to get a copy of your ghost of a chance short story. Okay, so to win a ghost of a chance, you need to hop on Facebook and um, post a meme or a GIF of your favorite paranormal romance couple. And that can be from TV, it can be from movies, it can be kind of from whatever you want that you can find. And make sure that you tag R and R home and tag me, um, and my Facebook tag is abigail.owen.books. Cool. Okay, so that's a ghost of a chance, her short story, and hashtag RNR home, and Abigail Owen. Dot Owen. Dot, dot books. Dot books. Okay. Uh, and on any of your social media, I saw somebody didn't have um, Facebook. So go ahead and hey, put Twitter it on work too. social media. Instagram. Yeah, if you can find yep. me. Uh, I, I'm in the expo, so, and I've got all those links there if you need to find them. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Abigail. Thanks, Kim. Okay, so our next author that we have, she's going to be coming into queue. This is Jeffy Kennedy. And let me see if there's... Hi, Jeffy. Oh, you've got Hi. your hat. On. I put my I hat on so people will recognize that. me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so um, Jeffy, first off, I love your name. That's Thank awesome. you. <laughs> um, so readers can find the most beautiful worlds in the fantasy and urban fantasy genres. And Jeffy Kennedy is, no, is one of those authors who brings to life the, uh, the fabulous world in her unique and fascinating setting. Where did your world building begin for you? Um, for me, world building always begins with character. I, I'm a pantser, and so I ride around in my characters' heads and figure out what they're seeing as they wander around and look at it. Uh, I'm also trained as a scientist from way back, so I, ha I know a lot of things like ecology and biology and so forth. So I kind of fill in the cracks that way. Okay. I cannot imagine being a panster and walking in a character's head and seeing the words <laughs> that you do. That's just amazing to me. It, it feels easy to me because I don't have to think it up. I just see what they see and write it down. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. So I already said, I love your name. And I love unique names, especially when women have what's considered traditionally a man's name. Tell us about your name and where you got it. Well, it's a nickname and it's short for Jennifer. Okay. Uh, so part of it's because I come from a generation in which there are many, many Jennifers. Oh, and, cool. And a lot of us are stealth Jennifers now. But my daddy was from the South, and he made up the nickname, uh, came as a surprise to my mom. No, he didn't want a boy. Uh, people always ask me that. Uh, when he helped my mom out of the car, bringing her home from the hospital, he said, here, hand me Jeffy. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it's And he died when I was three years old. So that's sort of like my gift from him. So I've always used that name. 
Okay, can I use it <laughs> as a character? Can I use as it? As a character, you could. I don't, to my knowledge, nobody has. See, I think that's awesome. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I hope I don't lose my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so authors are creative people who have different outlets for their creativity. And um, just because different things pop into our heads. So what other outlets do you have that you use other than your writing? Um, for a long time, I gave up other things because I tended to do those things instead of writing. Uh, but I love to sew. I love to make quilts. I love to piece quilts. Um, I also enjoy drawing and painting. I garden. I spend a lot of time gardening, which I don't know if that counts as creativity. But. Absolutely. <laughs> if you looked at my garden, that is pretty dang boring. Yeah, I would say it's, it, there's creativity there. <laughs> no, so I, li I like making things pretty. I, I like decorating the house, growing the garden, all that sort of thing. Very cool. Okay, so you have a podcast that is yes. First Cup of Coffee on Frolic Media Podcasts. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you actually produce this twice a week. Four times a week. Four? Oh, my God. Where do you find the time for that and <laughs> write the way you do? Um, it's it's a very low key casual podcast, so I do it four days a week on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and it's fifteen to twenty minutes long. And I chat over my first cup of coffee. Sometimes I put it on Instagram Live too, and you know it's basically uh, you know I don't plan it out, I don't edit it because I'm a pantser, right? So I pants everything in my life. And I just talk about what's going on in my life, what I'm working on, whatever's on my mind. And it's like we sit down and have a coffee, cup of coffee together and catch up. That's awesome. Yeah, I've listened to a couple of yours and I love the way, you know, it's like you're just starting off your day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was actually what you were doing, though. It's actually what I'm doing. Yeah, if, if I, I had to do anything more planned than that, I probably wouldn't be able to deal with it. I don't think my brain would work that well first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you have a new anthology coming out next week. Yes. Um, titled, and it's titled Under a Winter Sky. Um, and you wrote that with five other authors. Oh, with um, four. There's five of us total, so four other authors. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and it's an urban fantasy romance. So tell us a little bit about the book and how the five of you came together to create this collection of romantic midwinter holiday adventures. Um, well, we, we came together partly because I coordinated it. Uh, this is the third one that I've done like this, and they're just so much fun to do. They're just a real kick. And Grace Straven is one of my best friends, and she and I talk frequently, and we had planned to do this together. And every year, kind of, um, you know, beginning of the year around January, February, we're like, okay, who do we want to come play with us in this sandbox this year? And so this year we invited Melissa Marr and Leslie Penelope, and then... Um, Grace got just swamped by deadlines and busyness and, and family and pandemic. And she had to drop out. And Melissa Marr invited her bestie, uh, Kelly Armstrong, who could come and join us. And then Grace managed to clear out her life enough and she was sad. And she was like, I want to be in the anthology. <laughs> and so she wrote a, a short story. She said, I'm going to write oh. something that's like 5,000 words and put it in. And of course, she, it ended up being like almost 15,000 words, which is how she does things. <laughs> but so hey, it ended up being five of us. That and That's great for readers. I mean, that's yes. awesome. That's right. Nobody ever complains that there's too much. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeffy. So tell, tell our readers what they need to do for the scavenger hunt. 
All right. Well, since I'm into hats and I am particularly into princesses and queens and so forth, I would love to see readers post a picture of themselves in a tiara. And if you don't have a tiara handy, you could do a fancy hat or you could make a crown out of something that you've got at home and post it to your social media of choice. I don't care. Um, use the hashtag as you've been told and you can tag me. I'm easy to find because I'm the only Jeffy Kennedy there is. That's right. <laughs> okay. And we will not think any readers are crazy if they create a crown out of foil. That's right. Foil, <laughs> plastic wrap, uh, toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> but five minutes is all you got to do. That's right. Uh, um, well, thank you very much. Jeff. Oh, and I forgot to say that I'm giving away my oh, yeah. favorite holiday recipe, which is this incredibly scrumptious gingerbread pudding. So you make bread pudding from gingerbread, and then there's a bourbon sauce that you pour on top of it, oh. and it is amazing. Okay, I need that. I'm yes, you do. Play. Everybody needs it. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us and watch for any questions on the site. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, our next author is Dorinda Jones. Hi, Dorinda. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> okay, I love seeing everybody in their home offices. Yeah. Oh. You just kind of get a an impression of, of how busy they are yes. and and just who they are as a person. So yes, I love that. We did a huge giveaway, so we have boxes everywhere and sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That just shows that you're an incredibly busy woman. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't gone to Dorinda's website, then I suggest that you go there right now, just in a side little uh um link because on her home page she has a male model that looks like john krasinski from primes jack ryan or the office and he is just incredible to look at you know i could sit there and stare at that home page all day long yes <laughs> thank you my web designer came up with that he's like what do you think of this and i'm like yes that works yes <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I can also read your book. And this year you started two new series, not just one, but two. Um, the Betwixt and Between series and Sunshine Vikram. Am I saying that right? Vic okay. Vikram, Vikram. I don't even know. I just say Vikram. <laughs> okay, Vikram. Okay. I'll make sure I say it right. <laughs> okay, so. Who starts two series in one year and because there's only so many hours in a day to do that. So how do you do that? <laughs> well, you know, I have to be honest here and Jeffy, who just left us, um, she, we, we write together every day now. She's um, kind of gotten me back on track because like many writers and many people in general, the pandemic just really threw me off and I got, I started getting behind schedule and thanks to Jeffy, we write every morning now. And I just, I don't know. I wrote like 200,000 words in two months and it was just amazing. And, and just getting back on track and meeting, you know, getting those deadlines knocked out. And, and so that, that's what I do. I just try to write every day. <laughs> okay. So are you guys like online at the same yeah. time or? We do. We do Zoom, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So you just sit there and Zoom and while you're working? We do. And so we will, we do three one-hour sprints. So we write for an hour. And when we, when I say sprint, I mean, we're not like writing madly, but we just try to get, she gets in a thousand words every hour easily. I really? don't usually, I'm usually more like seven, eight, 900 words, just kind of depends um, and yeah, we just, we have very different writing styles. I'm a plotter. She's a pantser. So, 
uh, it's fun. It's fun to listen to how she does it. And then she has to go through all my plotting woes. And <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> so does she help you plot with you every now and then? We actually do. We, we bounce ideas off each other constantly. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's cool to have somebody to do that with. It, it helps you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it makes that writer's block not exist. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... You have a knack for magic, action, humor, and a dose of sexy on the side. What do you find the hardest to write? You know, uh, actually sex scenes are the hardest for me to write. Really? <laughs> they are. Okay, you, you wouldn't know that. <clears throat> well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I spend a lot of time. <laughs> I go over them and over them and I just try to get the reactions and the, you know, I feel like, and this is going to sound, I feel like if my readers toes are not curling, you know, when they read those sex scenes, if they're not just, then I have not done my job. So I just, <laughs> I try to make them very sexy and, and, you know, just very rewarding for my readers. <laughs> Okay, I missed that. I don't know if it was my internet or yours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so while well, you write them very well Thank and your you. attention to detail shows. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so it's been a few years since you wrote uh, First Grave on the Right, but that series is still going strong and gathering new fans every day. What do you like most about your heroine, Charlie Davidson? And is there anything you wish you didn't write about her that you didn't have her do? Um, there's nothing, I don't think, so. I love Charlie's humor. I love that she's so irreverent and she just can say whatever she wants to say because in real life we can't. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you know, Charlie is, yeah, she's, he's who she is. And so I just get to play and have fun and let her say anything to anyone. And, and it's so fun. The only thing I would suggest that, that I probably shouldn't have done, I don't really say, I don't regret it. Um, but I made her, she just kind of was getting more powerful and more powerful. And once you get to this point where your character is so powerful, you know, then who else, what else is out there that can defeat them you know and of course i had to come up with more powerful obstacles for her to defeat but yeah um i don't know that i did that wrong or, or that i even would have changed that but i did find that really challenging yeah yeah i can see that yeah okay so since you are the queen of funny paranormal what is the funniest Halloween costume you've ever been involved in? Um, <laughs> you know, I think growing up, this is going to sound silly, but growing up, we were very poor. So we had to just kind of make do with what we had. Okay. And one year, I think I was in the third grade, I came up with my version of a female Lone Ranger. And we actually, there's a picture of it somewhere and it's so awful. <laughs> It is like so bad I, that my hat is more like a sombrero. I don't know why we had a sombrero, but <laughs> I had on this orange dress. It's just so god awful. But <laughs> that's probably the most really ridiculous thing I've ever I've ever worn out in public. <laughs> well, you know, the homemade ones though are the most endearing, that's and they're the most memorable. They are, you know. They so are. I love that. And, and it also, you know, it really makes your, your creativity, it sparks your creativity because you, you have no choice. You have to really think about these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if there's ever been a bad day in the, for Sunshine, unless, of course, your name is Sunshine, your parents got you elected to sheriff, so you would come back home to Del Sol. New Mexico. Okay, just saying that makes me smile. So how did you come up with the premise for your new sunshine? I'm going to say Vikram again. That's fine. Vikram. Vikram. I, I, think it's more. I think it depends. On uh, sunshine Vikram series. And who would play sunshine in your movie? 
So this is actually a really funny story because uh, basically we were trying to figure out, my agent and I were trying to figure out what to do next after Charlie. So Charlie uh, ended kind of sort of with 13th grave. Um, and so we were trying to figure out what to do next. And I pitched, I have hundreds of ideas. I pitched everything to my agent and she's like, no, no, I'm not really feeling that. No. So we get to the end. We're calling my editor the next day. Both of my editors, I have two now. We're calling them the next day. And I had nothing. Like I was done. She's like, well, what else do you have? And I little, I just remembered this in the back of my mind from years and years ago. I said, well, I have this, this one story about a female sheriff in a small town. And it's kind of like the Gilmore girls meets Fargo. And she was like, that's it. That's what I, and I'm like, oh, okay. So then she asked me, well, what's that about? And I had no clue. I, that's all. I, <laughs> I had no clue. So I literally just kind of made stuff up as I went, which is what we writers do. Um, and the, the notepad I was writing on taking notes, it was like sunshine press or sunshine printing or something. And I'm like, well, it's about this female sheriff named Sunshine. And I literally just made it up right there on the That's spot. awesome. She loved it. We pitched it the next day. They bought it. So <laughs> very cool. Yeah. See, we can tell in your writing that you are somebody who thinks of all different kinds of creativity, you know, yeah. different different scenarios you know <laughs> because you take your characters in so many different ways I, I do I try to go in whatever I think my audience is expecting I try to do the opposite <laughs> there you go <laughs> you do <laughs> okay so it's time to go on our scavenger hunt yes tell our readers what they need to catch and please don't make them visit any graveyards okay no graveyard. We're good. Okay. <laughs> um, for mine, um, you need to post a picture on social media of either your favorite coffee mug or your favorite tea cup or mug, whatever, um, and uh, do the hashtag or in our home and uh, tag me. And again, I'm in the expo, so all my links are there. Just where whichever one you want to do, and. Um, you will get a free recipe for, let me find it. It is called Bet Your Bottom Dollar Easy Iced Latte, and it's incredible. <laughs> oh, very cool. Very cool. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, Dorinda, there will be um, some questions off to this side that you might want to just check out. Um, and we hope that everybody will post their picture of their favorite mug because that you're going to want that that particular recipe yes <laughs> thank you thank you hey kim i'm just popping on yep. for just one second to let you yes. know that we are actually going to skip to kashan paul next okay okay perfect So don't forget while you're um, while we're waiting for Kishan, um, go ahead and you can um, make sure that you do all of these um, events with all the different authors so that you are eligible for the grand prize of the Reader's Coffee Mug Tree. Hi, Kishan. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you, Kim? Good. And first off, Happy belated birthday. Yesterday Thank you. was Kishan's birthday. You know, it's hard to believe every year I get closer to being half a century. So <laughs> it, it's hard to kind of comprehend that, you know, because I remember when I was like 18, I'd be like, you know, 40 is old. I want to be <laughs> dead by the time I'm 40. And here I am at 48 and I'm still alive. So so now I hear that from other kids, right? They're like, oh my God, I'm going to be, you know, dead by 40. And I'm just like, no, honey, you have no idea. <laughs> That's when the fun starts. That's when it That's gets right. really good. <laughs> well, and some of us are approaching much older than that. So, <laughs> so 
<laughs> you look great. Okay. Thank so, you. Um, you're known for not holding back on the emotional punches for your readers. In fact, in your series, The Second Wife, you pretty much knock the tears out of your readers, but yet you have a very satisfying ending. Uh, what drives you to go on the emotional journey in your writing? You know, I've always found that emotional part the most intriguing part of a story, whether it's a movie or a book. That's what really gets to me, always have. Um, I'm a therapist when I'm not writing. And um, so for the past 20 years, people have come into my office and allowed me access into their emotional journeys. And it has been the most beautiful experience because you see people's strengths and their pain uh, and their courage through their journeys, right? So so when I write, for me, it's like um, making sure you see the layers and the depth because sometimes you don't get it until you see the pain. So. Right. I find that whole thing fascinating. Okay, so now I totally get get your writing. Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of inspiration on a daily basis. I don't use my clients as inspiration. No, no. But yeah. But yeah, you see yeah. the emotion and 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 what it does to people. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so the second wife was a finalist in the Independent Author Network Book of the Year Award for 2020. Congratulations. Very Thank well you. deserved. Thank Very you. well deserved. So um, what did you do to celebrate that incredible achievement? I first didn't believe it. I mean, I saw the email and I was like, yeah, no. And then I walked away and then I came back a couple hours later and it was still there. So. <laughs> So it didn't first disappear. it was like to make sure it didn't disappear. <laughs> then I went to the link to make sure my name was there. Because, you know, again, I didn't believe it. Um, but it was such a cool experience. It, it doesn't get old. You know, when, when you get uh, recognized for your books or your writing, uh, whether it's the first one or the 20th, which I'm nowhere near my 20th, um, it just always feels like, really? Mine? Yeah, you really yeah. thought mine was that good? So um, and it was. it's always humbling. Yeah. Well, thank you. Very thank well you. So I always like, I share it with my, my, my small group, my family, and then my small group of uh, readers who've, and friends who've kind of been there with me from the beginning. And then like, can you believe this happened? And then from there, then I just started posting it publicly because then I was like, okay, this is real. But yeah. <laughs> it is very cool to get and achievement like that. So congratulations. Okay, so um, many readers have said that they cry right along with the character. Oh, oh. oh there she is. Oh, there you are. Okay. Did I leave? <laughs> I don't know if I leave or not. That's okay. I was going to start dancing, so I'm glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a ghost is what I am, but just, you know, so I just come and go. <laughs> um, many readers have said that they cry right along with your characters while reading your book. So I need to know, do you cry while you write? Uh-oh. I'm not sure if I'm here or, or not, or if it's Kashan that's fading in and out. Can you hear me, Gwen? Yes, you are okay. still on. Yep, sorry. Hey, I like the pop <laughs> over here. Uh, Kashan did say for her last thing is that um, she does cry from start to finish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, Kashan, if you could, if you can still hear us, if you could write in the comment section what you want to have um, readers do 
for the scavenger hunt and um, what, um, what they will win for the scavenger hunt. Do you see her at all? Yes, she is writing. Okay, so she says you need to show a picture of their favorite Bollywood couple. And you want to use the hashtag r and r and Kashan Paul author. And I'll go ahead and drop that into the main chat as well. Okay, awesome. Oh, and then we have um, we have June Graham available if you'd like for her to come up next. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, one more thing. Kashan has a fabulous um, recipe that she's going to give. Um, and it's... I don't know how to say it. It's K A A N Khan. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, so if Kashan, if you could put that also non. in in the comment section. It's just non, non bread. Oh, okay. Non. Okay. Non. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that extra K gets all confusing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Well then I'm gonna send June in to chat with you. Okay. Hi, Hi. June. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Okay. Soul stones. stones. Is that yeah, that's correct. is that correct? Okay. Yeah. And you uh, can you show us some of your fabulous jewelry that you have? I mean, since you know, I ha I had it all set up, and it's like this tiny screen, right? So you can only see so much, <laughs> but yeah. So here, here are some oh, of my little great. heart drop earrings and these are the small version and they come in this cute little bottle. Do, are, are you getting feedback from me? I don't know if you could. If, no. Does it sound strange? Okay, perfect. Yep. Sounds a little strange to me. Um, these are my, my most popular earring. These are my heart drop hoops oh, oh those are pretty so i think sarah may have a pair of these and then of course i have rings and things and necklaces and all kinds of beautiful things so i, I started with jewelry and then my love of stones and gemstones just kind of took over and then now we sell um crystals and just like uh smoke cleansing bundles with crystals we have beautiful keychains these are a great holiday gift because yeah, they get absolutely. and they're just fun and um and whoops and uh candles with the crystals on this one is i love this one this is moonstone so it's gardenia and grapefruit and oh yeah just all kinds of beautiful fun things and all everything that i have comes in um a pretty package so i don't know if you, the glare on that is all right but um everything is really cutely wrapped ready for gifting very cool and for our paranormal and fantasy readers those are awesome yes the crystals for sure okay so you're going to participate in the scavenger hunt tell our readers what they need to do in order to be eligible in the grand prize you're in the grand prize so Great. you're like the special extra <laughs> yes i love being extra and special <laughs> so um so they just need to go to my facebook page it's soul stones and um like and comment they can you know uh, put any what are the hashtags do we have special hashtags it, yeah it's hashtag r and r home Perfect. So the, enter that and um, just say a quick hi, you know, just put that in and then they'll be entered. And um, it's a choice of these are this is what my prize is giving away is the gemstone hoops, my most popular earring and in their choice of stones. OK, those are beautiful. OK, I'm, and they're I'm, very light, lightweight, easy to wear. And you'll get tons of compliments as, soon as you people will be like, oh, that's a heart. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're very unique. I love them. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for joining us and watch for comments on the site. Oh, I will. Thank you so much, Kim. Kathy Lyons is on and she's saying she looked that those earrings look great. So she Aww. wants <laughs> Oh, awesome. I can't see her. Oh, am I? I'm, I may not be in the. I mean, Go I'll see that later, I'm sure. On the right-hand side, the, uh, it says stage on top. Yes. And the comments are right there. 
Yeah. Okay. I see Gwen. Gwen was the last comment. Maybe it just takes a minute on my, my end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Our Hello. next author is Leslie Penelope. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay. So you have like that cool microphone uh -huh. and you've got the great voice for doing this. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I think yeah, everyone speaks their own voice. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that your, really your normal voice or are you like yes. have this stage voice going? I do the special radio voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, your Earth Singer Chronicles are considered a gas lamp or historical fantasy series. And I, for one, love how authors mix time periods into one epic story. Um, what was the hardest obstacle you faced with the series and what surprised you the most? I think um, it, it's a four book series and uh, the fourth book comes out next year and, and writing the fourth book book was actually the hardest part. I mean, there are different challenges ac across the way, but I had planned out some things. And then as you write, things change. And so actually one of the couples changed um, that I had planned, you know, it was a four book series, four couples. And as I was writing, you know, it just occurred to me that, oh, wait, this other couple needs a story. So that was probably the biggest surprise. Um, yeah. And with the time period, I did have to do some research, even though it is fantasy, but I wanted to ground it in reality. So that was also something that was a little bit different for me. Yeah. Okay. So what, what is the um, best part of that, that you really liked that you kind of switched up? I'm kind of throwing a question out there. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, you, you learn about the characters and the world as you write them. And uh, it, it just felt more natural. And I, I realized that, um, because of some of the magic that's happening, I needed to introduce a character from another place. And so it gave me an opportunity to create somebody brand new that I hadn't yeah. thought of initially. And so that was actually really cool. And it was a different kind of hero. It's actually the hero of book three, which is out now, Cry of Metal and Bone. And he was, okay. a, he was a surprise, so. Yeah, okay, so tell us the hero in book three. So his name is Ty Summerhawk, and he is a smuggler. So he's a um, he's a captain of a ship, and they call him a pirate, but he's really a, a kindly smuggler. He's kind of my Han Solo esque character. That was, you know, sort of my inspiration as I was writing him. <laughs> yeah, I love him. He's great. Okay, so you wrote a novella in between each one of your novels. And your novels aren't short; they're like five hundred no. pages. Yes. So I'm a lot of story in there. Um, and was it your publisher's decision to write the novella in between or was it something that you felt you needed to do for this story? It was my decision. And actually because I came to publishing in a kind of an unusual way, I had self-published originally. And so self-published, I was like, well, I'll just have these novellas and they'll be great um, lead-ins and prequels. And eventually I sold the series to St. Martin's Press. So when they republished them, um, at one point they were going to republish the novella, do the novellas as, as well. But um, the, the, um, digital publishing arm, they, I don't think they were taking any more, more books. So I was able to retain the rights and publish the novellas and self-publish them. And so it really wasn't anything, you know, I had a good enough contract where I could self-publish in the same world. And that was, you know, something that we negotiated because I was interested in doing that. But I had always known that I wanted to tell these additional stories in the world, even though <laughs> the books themselves are so full of stories. It, it did give me a chance to follow some other characters and lay some groundwork. So they're optional reading, but um, I think like for the best experience of the whole series, it's good to, to read them as well. Well, and you came about your contract very differently than most writers. Kind of right. give a little bit of background about that. Cause it's sure. an awesome story. 
Yeah, I when I started writing, I had done a lot of DIY things. So self-publishing, you know, I'd, I'd researched it and just made a lot of sense to me. And I had actually put out the first two books in the series. And um, my editor, Monique Patterson at St. Martin's Press, had found them. I was doing, you know, self-publishing marketing and trying to get get the books out there. And so she loves fantasy and science fiction. So she had read the self-published versions and initially contacted me, just emailed me through the, through the form on my website and asked me about uh, pitching a new series, new books to her, because it is fairly unusual to republish books that are already out. Um, but eventually, she, yeah, and I mean, people, it happens a little bit, you know, you hear about it, but it's not, it's definitely not the normal way. Um, so I did pitch her something. And then she kind of decided that she really loved uh, Song of Blood and Stone, which is the first book in the series. And she thought that she could bring it to a wider audience. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, so yeah, it's been a, an unusual <laughs> ride, but it was really exciting to get that, that sort of feedback. But that's, I mean, that's a great story and you should be very honored that she actually approached you like that. I mean, oh, that absolutely. does not happen. I know, yeah. And people ask, you know, I, don't, I can't give advice about getting published because I, I did get published in such an unusual way, but yeah, I'm definitely grateful. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. You talked about your brother reading your books as a beta reader. Does he read all of your books? And how can we get a brother like that? <laughs> yes, he actually does read all of my books. He doesn't appreciate the sex scenes. He tells me he skims them. So that's fine. <laughs> but my brother is an actor. He's a professional actor. And so he comes at character in a really interesting way. And he's a creative person. And so he does. He helps me with the story. He helps me to develop the characters. And yeah, I was really lucky that we're both in these creative fields. We both have creative minds. And he, he's willing to, to read everything. <laughs> hey, that's cool that you have that kind of relationship with your brother. I mean, husbands don't read most authors books or you know right. a lot of times sisters will but brothers, yeah no i know <laughs> yeah. i just have the one brother so my husband is supportive but he doesn't he doesn't really read fiction um but he supports me in all kinds of ways so yeah to get that actual story feedback i do turn to my brother very cool okay on your youtube channel notice the radio voice it totally goes um l penelope you talk about your imaginary castle and how when you first imagined a story, it's this wonderful, beautiful thing in your head. And then when you write it, you feel like it's a shack. That's a very different thing than what you thought of. Let me just tell you, I will live in that shack any day of the week. That is an awesome shack. Um, so tell me, why do you think authors are the hardest on their own personal work? And is it healthy to strive for what you perceive as the perfect story? I think that we're critical. Um, I think it was Ira Glass from This this American Life who talked about, you know, when you first start out, you've consumed so much, we've read so much that we know what a good story is. And our ability to achieve that is far away from our understanding of what a good story is. And so part of becoming a professional and, you know, all of the 10,000 hours of practice or whatever it takes to, to get really good at something is like shortening the gap between what we know is really great work because we've read it to this thing that we're creating that's not nearly as good. Um, I, I fight against my perfectionism all the time because I don't think it's healthy to, and nothing can ever be truly perfect. You know, you do have to ship things. If you want to be an author, if you want You're to- You're pretty darn close. <laughs> well, thank you. But like, I get to the point where I'm happy with it, where I read it and I feel like I'm, I'm not disrespecting the reader by presenting something to them that I wouldn't want my name behind, you know? And, yeah. and something, I'm presenting something that I enjoy reading. And that's the most important thing. So I do, I don't give them the shack. I like polish it up first. And then I, I give them, you know, the small house that is not the castle I envisioned, but it's, it's something better than the shack. <laughs> okay. If you could be one of your characters, who would it be and why? I think that I would be Ella, who is one of the characters, she's in the whole series, but you first meet her in the first book of the series, uh, Song of Blood and Stone. And she was difficult to write because she's a pure optimist. And I don't consider myself an optimist, but I would like to be. And I think that looking at the world that way would be really helpful and nice and, and different than the way that I look at it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think we would all like to look at it through her eyes. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going on our scavenger hunt. Um, what do you want them to do? And what are they playing for? Well, in honor of my imaginary castles and fantasy romance, um, I would like you to post your a picture of one of your favorite castles or just a beautiful castle that you find that you would love to live in or write in. Um, so use the, the hashtag, hashtag R&R Home, and you can tag me. I'm at Leslie Penelope on both Twitter and Instagram. Leslie with a Y, Y. And um, yeah, I'm giving away my special kickin' hot chocolate recipe. So it's a little, oh, yeah. little extra in the hot chocolate. <laughs> Cool. Very cool. Okay. I, I, I need a hot chocolate <laughs> with a kick. I do need that. <laughs> okay. Well, and you can find Leslie's, um, all her social media, um, so that you spell her name correctly on her, um, homepage right here on readers and readers at home. Thank you, Leslie. Thanks so much, Kim. <laughs> Okay, next is Kathy Maxwell. Yes. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I just, I feel like I've just landed from another planet. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I just got plunked in here. <laughs> and, and I'm hearing lots of different voices. Are you hearing as many voices? I am not. Are you sure? There's uh -oh. not something else. Going I don't know on. what's going on. Here we're gonna try. Oh, can you hear me now? Are we good? If you need to close, if uh, you have any other uh, tabs or browsers open right now, you might want to just close them and just have the backstage open. That'll help. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, you're good. You All sound right. great. This is good. I think it's good that everybody sees what a computer weenie I am. I'm an absolute. <laughs> after all this time, and I used to sell computers. So after all this time and everything, I'm still a weenie. I'm still a weenie. That you know, just it's embarrassing. And well, isn't it fun isn't... to kind of come into people's houses? Yeah, you know? yeah. I get to see, we get to see everybody's house this way. I know, I know. So don't look at, over there at the bookshelves that are a mess. Yes, I'm so glad you can't see the floor that needs to be vacuumed. Yeah, you know, right? I turned my desk so that you couldn't see my messy bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you don't have a messy bookshelf, you're not a writer. I mean, that's just that's it. Right. That's just everything right there. <laughs> okay, Kath Kathy, you've got the battle of the sexes down. Your historical you. romances. You. you just you made my night. That was the nicest thing. You could have ever said to me, Kim, thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> well, it's true. It's very true. So your historical romances are full of hot and heavy tension that keeps me swiping right all, all the time uh -huh. on my Kindle. I love um, it. This, what's the secret to building the tension and the passion bet between your characters? You know, I think it's the same thing that builds uh, tension and passion between us in real life. And it's just that awareness, that sudden awareness for this person out of all the people you run into, all of a sudden this person is just a little bit too much on your mind. And when that starts to happen, it makes us feel vulnerable. Love makes us feel vulnerable. And so consequently, we kind of play this game of going forward, taking steps back. Do they, do they like me? Do they not like me? Do I like them? Oh no, I don't like them. Maybe I do like them. So you see that kind of craziness that plays very well. Yeah, absolutely. You do that very well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I think it's because I've had lots of experience. <laughs> oh, is there a story we need to know? No, no, I'll just tell you it's 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 one of those things. I used to be a sailor. What can I say? It's 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 life. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what is it about the historical romance genre that drew you in? And have you ever written or will you ever write a contemporary? Well, I don't know what I'm gonna write from one book to the next. I mean, it's like, I, I never know. So I, this, it sounds crazy, but um, writing's hard. <laughs> I mean, it would just be so nice 
you know, if I was sitting here in a pinoir with bonbons and just <laughs> popping the words out and everything, I have 420 words today. And they all, they all stink. Every one oh, of yeah. 20 words. I'm and, sure. But yesterday I had a great day. And it was, it was like the heavens opened oh. and, oh, yeah, exactly, except you're on key. But, um, my, that's it. Today, I was not on key. That can be just, that's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. But uh, I write about Regency England and I enjoy it because it's kind of the beginning of the modern age. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that we take for granted here and now uh, can have their roots in the Regency and it's also been termed the age of revolution because the Napoleonic revolution was going on. The rights for women was coming mm -hmm. in in the 1790s with Mary Wollstonecraft. There were, the middle class was starting to rise. And so there's a lot that I can play with that I run into in modern life because people are people no matter what. Right. And, uh, you know, I like, I live in a subdivision right now. Um, and, and I love subdivision living. I love where I live. It's just delightful. But it's very similar to the villages I write about in England, where everybody kind of knows what's going on <laughs> and takes an interest. And so that gives me, I, I have a lot of fun with that. I have great fun with that. So all your neighbors are checking up to see what you're doing. Is that what you're saying? No, you know, all my neighbors are wondering if they're in my books. That's, that's what's <laughs> happening. They're all like, oh, I can't. Is that me? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but the good news is people rarely recognize themselves. So I think I'm That's safe. That's true. I think I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. If you could make any of your heroes step off the page in real life, which one would it be and why? You know, it's always the one I'm writing about at this moment. I'm sure if you ask that question of every author, that's probably what they say because, um, well, this sounds a little schizophrenic, but they are real in my mind. Yeah. And I find myself brushing my teeth and having conversations with them. <laughs> or, you know, in the middle of the night at 2.30, I wake up and I think, oh, that's what they meant. That's what it was. Why didn't I, I say it. that? So, yes, <laughs> it's just that great moment right there. Yeah. So you just fall in love with them every every single one while you're writing. Isn't that important? I think yes. because we're writing romances, we have to fall in love with That's them. Right. I was reading a um, a Carl Heisen uh, satire, Squeeze Me, uh, recently, and I was thinking, you know, he doesn't get to fall in love with his characters. No. no. Because, but I do, I do, and yeah. that is my. I like all my characters, even the villains. I love the villains. Well, sometimes those are the best characters that come to life, you know? Oh, yes. Isn't because you love yes. to hate them. I mean. <laughs> yes. It's all different no, kinds I think, of I think, emotion. I think, getting, I think I'm hearing some of your neuroses rising to the top here. <laughs> Is that what's happening here? You're what? Like, I don't okay. have any of those. Yes. And my mother-in-law said, no, no, it's not my mother-in-law. <laughs> it was Lady Flibbergibbet that said this. Yes. <laughs> I have okay. a great mom. I had a great mother-in-law. Uh, just for the record, I had a great mother-in-law. So you know. I actually did too. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this year you released your first book in your new series. Yes. Um, yes. A man's Guide to Women. Yes. That series. I love the title for that series. Thank you. I mean, first off, okay cheek there not really sure about because seriously how many men belong to a logical men's society exactly and exactly so what do you picture when you picture this men logical men's society and do they actually have a guidebook for dangerous women well you know it's interesting because uh they don't because their their opinion of women it was all started kind of tongue in cheek uh, about, you know, a group of them decided that, you know, they were getting tired of being hounded to get married and they'd rather sit in the pub and they'd like to drink. And, and that was it. And, and so this is gone. But once a man gets married, he's out of the society. And for a while, there were, you know, there were quite a few, you know, members and everything. But 
at the time when this book opens, it's getting, it's, it's a pretty small group. And, they're, and a good number of them are just there to drink. Oh, the other thing is if you become widowed, you can come in and drink. And many a widower has found that life is better if he just stays drunk all the time. So, you know, it's, so that's kind of, kind of the, the way it is. And the women just think it's the most ridiculous thing. But, but, the, but when is a woman dangerous? And that was the question I wanted to know. When is a woman truly dangerous? And I think a woman becomes dangerous when she starts to know what she wants and she isn't afraid to go after it. So here you have one idea of what life's about and then boom, uh, you're finding out that they've got a voice. And and I I liken it. uh, I remember when my children were babies and all of a sudden, you know, they started speaking and they started having ideas of their own. And that's kind of how these guys are like, what? wait, you said what? You, you don't want your cereal this morning? You know, that sort of thing. So it's, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a fun part. It's a fun part. I love that analogy. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. So tell us about your recent release of the, his secret mistress. Um, because I absolutely love the line in your blurb. Loving her exiled him, trusting him ruined her. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I'd say um, um, the one that got away story. Uh, I think each and every one of us, every, every person listening has got someone in their past that they sat there and thought, um, what if? What if I'd stay with that person? What if if that had worked out between myself and that person? And you can have a very good life, but in the back of your mind, there's still that, that, that the meaning of that person and what they had to say. So in his secret mistress, it's, it's a question of, um, you know, he's all happy where he is. He's a member of the logical men's society. And and then in walks the, the one woman who broke his heart. And the one woman who kind of sent him off into a whole different journey than what he'd planned on. And she's still looking good. She's still <laughs> looking good. You know? And that's, that's because this is, she's 35 years old. And one of the things I found in this, um, in this story is people have often asked me about having a heroine that old. And I'm like, I think 35 is, is just the right age to think about settling down. I so told my kids they couldn't get married till 30. You've got great times ahead of you. I'm sorry, what, Kim? I told my kids they couldn't get married till 30. Yes? Yeah. And I how mean, did that go? Is it well, working? That one got married. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he made it to 25. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's not Although, bad. Although, you know, um, I had a, a, a guy, uh, I had a, a book, John Adams. John Adams, that's what I'm trying to think about, the um, he, the autobiography of him. And I can't remember the, who the writer was, a famous bio, biographer. But he made the comment that uh, John Adams said that he wanted to get married. And his mentor said, oh, no, you just graduated from college. First off, you don't have the money to have a wife, and you and, and a man isn't he doesn't have the wisdom to get married until he's thirty. It's true. And I thought with my son, I thought, oh, I've got seven more years to go. <laughs> oh, this is it. So, but I always thought that was very good advice. Did it, so? Did it work with your son? You know, just about almost. Really? He was like maybe 28, 29. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, I. You know, he just uh, had to keep bouncing around till he found the right woman. So I have a wonderful daughter-in-law. Well, and that's the key. I mean, if they find the right person, they find the right person. Correct. No matter what your age. And sometimes they find the wrong person. Uh, fingers crossed. So far, mine's I know, really good. Really. But you know what? I, <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes you have to find the wrong person. Here we go back to the one that got away. That whole yeah. idea. Yep. Sometimes we have to find the wrong person in order to appreciate the right person when they come along. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay, you so know, we should be we should be doing this. We should be doing like a marriage counseling column. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should a- actually ask Kishan to join us. She's the <laughs> licensed one. <laughs> I know real. <laughs> we just have opinions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay, so our readers are ready to go scavenger hunting. Oh, yes. What do you want them to find, and what are they playing for? Okay, in the book, His Secret Mistress, there's a great scene over a punch bowl. Because, you know, punch was very important in Regency England, as it is today, especially Mm -hmm. if you're going to have a big holiday coming up like Thanksgiving. So do I tell them what their virtual gift is? or? Yeah, yes. Over the virtual prize. Okay, so the virtual prize is not a Regency punch recipe because it would have knocked your socks off. <laughs> they had one drink, at, I mean, one bottle of whatever after another. But this is a really tasty one that a friend of mine um, who blogs, drinks, and movies and everything. So she put this together for us. It's going to be a good one for Thanksgiving. So if you're looking for something to serve everyone, but in order to it is adult uh, only. get close. Yes. No, I've got I've got a non a non alcoholic oh. option also. Oh, you know, cool! We are equal opportunity drinkers. Around. There you go. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, I want you to put up a post a picture of your favorite wine glass, drinking mug, drinking cup, anything that makes your hair. I've got this. Does this show up? Yep. Cha 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 cha. I tried Bring it back to be a little, little bit. Yes. Okay. All right. There you right. go. All right. So anything that is your for your favorite drink, whatever makes you happy, just post a picture of it at this address, and then Kim's going to go through and find everybody, and then you'll get the punch recipe, and I'm go. excited. Then you'll let me know if you like it, because it's uh, I think it's very tasty. I, I think it looks very good. I can't wait to try yes. it. It'll be yeah. a great, great thing to introduce my new daughter-in-law to. Oh, this is what well, uh, the alcoholic one or the non-alcoholic? The alcoholic one. one. You might need that to get through at Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, you know, it's gonna. I think. I think there's gonna be some social distancing going on, so <laughs> we'll need something to keep our voices from getting hoarse as we shout at each other. <laughs> well, Kathy, thank you much, very much for thank joining you. us. It was great to see you again. And oh, we'll it's see wonderful you seeing you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. We have a couple of other um, scavenger hunt authors that couldn't come live tonight, but they are giving away items. If you go to um, Kathy Lyons page and she has um, a giveaway on her page that she's going to ask. Kathy's actually here. Oh, she is. Yep, she was able to join us. So I can put her in to chat with you if you'd like. Okay. Yep, okay, one sec. Oh my God, my makeup. (laughs) I look like, wow, this is, I mean, okay. I'm looking very dark and exotic and overdone. Are you laying? Are you laying? <laughs> I am at Cindy D's. Um, I come to R and R every year, and mm-hmm. Cindy D's lives in Dallas, and she's my best friend. So we had always planned on having a little retreat during, our, you know, just, I come early or I stay late, and then I do R and R, and you know, as long as I'm in Dallas. Well, since we're R and R at home, I'm at home at Cindy's house. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I love that you're here in Dallas. Even though I'm not close to you, it's great that you're here. So tell us about your new, your werewolf series. So um, a friend of mine, actually, it was Cindy. Um, I had an editor say, I want you to do werewolves. And I said, I never do werewolves. I hate werewolves. I'm a cat person. I never do werewolves. But I said, you know, a contract is a contract. So, all right, I'm going to think about werewolves. And I put together all these ideas, but I hated every one. And normally when it's my idea, you would think I'd like it. But no, I hated it. (laughs) And so, uh, I I know. (laughs) Then she said, you don't like alphas, not like the traditional alpha. 
I said, no, I like geeks. I want to do the cast of the Big Bang Theory has to fall in love oh. while being accidentally turned into werewolves. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And so that's what I wrote. Honestly, it's, I mean, big. we got some badass werewolves that are trying to save the world, but then they realize they need tech support. Exactly. And so we... We turn the cast of the Big Bang Theory in various forms, in various ways, into werewolves. And then they have to deal with being werewolves and save the world. And Very so, cool. well, they start out just by saving Wisconsin. So that's book <laughs> one. Where Geeks Save Wisconsin. And then book two, which just came out, is the Where Geeks Save Lake Waka Waka. Waka Waka. Is yes, that a real because- lake? No. Okay. <laughs> in fact, in the book, I say, if you look at Wisconsin wakes, uh, lakes, there are all these Native American names uh-huh. that are 32 letters that whatever. <laughs> so my hero, I rather than pick a lake and like have to go to some strange, bizarre lake in Wisconsin, I just had the hero say he could never remember the name of it. He just called it Lake Waka Waka. <laughs> oh, there you so, go. <laughs> so that's book two. And then book three, we really struggled with the title because it's not, I, I, and I was talking with Cindy and she said, well, where exactly is it set? And I said, the middle of nowhere. She's like, there you go. So book three is like, is the where geeks save the middle of nowhere. Oh, cool. Very that cool. That was Cindy's title. See, you know, the best buddy author always helps when you're trying to plot things out. She can plot anything. She just has one of those minds. I can put characters to anything. That's just my strength. And so together we make one really good author. (laughs) Okay, so I know that she does stacks of cards. Do you write that same way? Okay. Nope. I, I I know the general flow and I know a lot of details about the characters. And then I'm... She calls it the dynamic explorer. I call it, well, I stepped here and then, okay, I can go that way. And then that's going to take me further away. So I'll go over there. I once called her up and I said, I have all these amazing characters. And I like went through who they were. And I said, Cindy, they're just staring at me. What am I going to do with them? And she said, well. You can, and just right off the top of her head, she gave me four or five different directions. And I'm like, Ooh, I like that direction. And so off I went. Oh, did you lose me? I did lose you. I, I, the last I heard was right off the top of her head. Oh, right off the top of her head. She gave me four or five different directions and I picked one and I just went. Very cool. See, and that was actually Dragonbound. You, you know, Dragonborn. Book two is Dragonborn. Dragonborn. Or Bound. Ha! Huh. Book one is Dragonborn. Okay. Book two was Dragonbound. Okay. <laughs> See, you can kind of tell that you're more along the lines of a panster because you are like one of the life of the party type people. You know, have you always been that way? (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I was the second of five girls. I'm sorry. I got to stretch out here. So this is my trick right there. There you go. I can't do that. (laughs) Be impressed. That's all I can do. (laughs) Um, I'm, I, I had four sisters. There are five of us. And one of us was handicapped. So if you didn't make noise, you weren't noticed. (laughs) So I learned very young to <laughs> razzle dazzle <up. laughs> Well, and I'm not going to suggest that my mother wouldn't feed us or take care of us or anything like right. that. But truly, if you wanted to get noticed in my household, you kind of had to make a little noise. And and I excel. It turns out I excelled at that. You do excel at the razzle dazzle. <laughs> But really bad at this makeup. I look so goth. Well, it looks good from this end. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe the light. It's always the lighting. It's always the light. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. So tell our readers I'm- what they need to do. 
Even well, though you um, have a little video. I have a video that I think is in my uh, expo yes. room, which honestly, it's really funny. It so is funny. I hope you all. It is funny. It's <laughs> I hope you all go check it out. Yeah. We're call we're calling it drawn to werewolves. So in one minute, draw a werewolf. And I drew a little tiny one <laughs> with little baby teeth. And I saw yours. So. <laughs> Let's just say and I then Cindy's better. <laughs> Even Cindy, if it is Cindy is life, an equest it's good. Yes. <laughs> Cindy's is an equestrian, but honestly, I love Mary Wines the first best. Yeah. <laughs> And you have to see the video to see Mary Wine. So just in one minute, draw a werewolf and post it uh, to all the hashtags. And uh, I have, if um, I Kim, if you can give me the email addresses, yes. awesome. Yeah. If not, no, I will. It's uh, okay. Then great. Then you will get ooh, 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 a um, uh, a short story that I wrote. And um, I also have, if I get the snail mail address, I have a little bear charm. Because Bound by Shadows, which is a reprint of my first Grizzly Bear book in paperback. Woohoo! Yay! So, uh, yes, Grizzly Bear Shifters, too. So, yeah. I've done now Bears and Shifters, and I just sold a cat series. So, really? Getting, oh, my. Congratulations. Bears and cats. Finally, Yay! you got your cats. <laughs> I did. It's to the new, it's a new app called Kiss. And uh, so, anyway, just check it out. It's a great kiss. Okay. And it's, uh, it does um, books, lots of books. Okay. And so, yay. Awesome. Anyway. So, yes, draw a werewolf. Draw you a got one minute. And post it on social media and hashtag RNR home. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Have a good time with Cindy and Mary. I, and Mary. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. And last, we have Kristen. Bone. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Okay. It, and you go by KL Bone. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I do. KL Bone. Okay. So are you in Belfast? Uh, yeah. So. So what time <laughs> of the night are you at right now? Uh, it's, uh, let's just say it's pretty late. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, yeah. Well, thank you for staying up and joining us. We appreciate um, it. I'm happy to and excited to be here. Well, you have the best tagline for your dark fantasy paranormal uh, novels, and it's not, a, a, not all fairy tales are for children. I love that, because isn't Thank that you. the truth? I, I, mean, I tend to think so, so yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so what fairy tales inspired you as a kid? Which ones were you drawn to? Well, I liked some of the traditional ones, of course. I was I love Sleeping Beauty, you know, Prince versus Dragon, and um, I I liked Beauty and the Beast because what girl doesn't want that library? Yep, um, yep. It's in the castle. Um, Everybody also, wants to tame the beast, <laughs> of course. Um, but I also really enjoyed when I think about the stories, like The Last Unicorn, would be an example, um, which isn't necessarily the lightest story in, in the world. You know, the prince yeah. and the unicorn fall in love, but can ultimately never be together. Um, uh, I liked uh, Legend, um, which was a Tom Cruise movie directed by Ridley Scott, where you had a devil trying to kill the last unicorn to destroy all light. Um, I really liked the good versus evil intensity of those sorts of pieces. So you were always drawn more to the darker, the darker uh, definitely. stories. Definitely, I, I yeah, have always that's cool. been. Uh, um, so um, have you always wanted to rewrite the classics when you grew up and make them a darker, more paranormal for adult audiences? Um, yeah, I, my, I am. Um... I don't necessarily think that I'm completely rewriting a classic in a dark way. The classic fairy tales were dark. Um, it's Disney that's kind of made them lighter over the years, turned them into happier stories than yeah. they were originally intended to be or originally told. Uh, fairy tales used to be, you know, taught moral lessons, 
taught children why to stay in, why they should stay inside at night, why they should behave. Um, there were, you know, always moralities within those right. traditional tales. My first published story was actually written from the point of view of a villain. Um, Indoctrination is my was my first book out, and it's which one was that? Indoctrination. Okay. It's a science fiction novel about a woman kidnapped by aliens, and she is the villain of the story. She is trying to lead an empire to take over other worlds, and they're a parasitic race, so they're infesting other species, and it's oh. completely told from her point of view. Um, I'm also a student of mythology, more probably more so than fairy tales. Um, my undergraduate degree was on Helen of Troy. My master's was in vampires. And the PhD that I'm working on is in Irish mythology. Oh, um, cool. So my, my um, Black Rose is my biggest series. And it is actually based in Irish myth. But I also took the story of Tristan and Isolde from Altherian literature, which is about a, um, an Irish princess and a knight of Cornwall, Tristan and Isolde, they were knights of King Arthur, and they could never be together. They had a very forbidden love story, and Black Rose is also about a knight and a princess who were never meant to be together. Um, my heroine's a little bit, um, she, she becomes a knight herself as opposed to playing the traditional princess role. Okay. So she's a little more, uh, adventurous perhaps than the traditional is old, but it's definitely based on what that myth, the, the epic love story within my tales, the darkness comes from that forbidden love, tragic stories. Um, that is a very mythological background that I come from. Sure. Okay. So obviously you're, you're very inspired by the Irish um, culture and and what that brings to your writing what um did you start writing before you went to ireland about the irish or did that come out in your stories after you got there um i didn't publish my first book until i was already in ireland so okay um it was definitely influenced i got my masters in england so it has a lot of influence from there as well um so, so you're, you, you've been putting some books out really fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so t um, tell us about your Vampire Bride series your late, and your latest release, Shattered Moonlight. Um, my Vampire Bride series, I have a book right here. It's Very a cool cover. It's a brand new box set that has a collection of three different stories. They were written as standalones, but um, you do have crossover characters in each one. So um, they're about vampires finding their destined mates. And each one was kind of inspired by a different setting. Um, the first one is the uh, based on the Tower of London and it's a secret vampire society that's hidden inside of the tower. Um, and he's, the main character was a knight and he falls, he's turned by a very bad vampire and he spends years trying to get out from the power of this bad vampire. And when oh, he meets cool. Catherine and they start falling in love, he finally finds the courage to try and take down the bad guy. Um, and then the, the second piece of it, a side character that you meet in book one is the main character for book two. And her name is Julia, and she lives on the Isle of Skye. And I was actually visiting Scotland and took a tour of the island. And there was a story that was told. Apparently, there, there's an island in Skye, and it's owned by two brothers. And they only live on the island for about two weeks. That's it. And the rest of the time, it's completely abandoned. And between the fact it rains all the time on the Isle of Skye and this kind of mysterious island... It inspired the story Immortal Sky, and the main hero from that piece is actually a Selkie. Um, he's a man who can turn into a seal, and she's a vampire. 
And uh, so it's very much inspired by the mythology of the area that I was in. And See, that's the, the cool. I went is, to Sky a few years ago and absolutely wasn't it loved beautiful? it. Yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Very cool. Okay, so what would you like readers to post on, on social media? And what are they playing for? Um, I'd like them to post a, a, a picture or a description of their favorite mythological creature. Okay, um, very cool. And they're playing for a, a recipe for Rachel's soup. It's a soup that's actually featured in Shattered Moonlight, which is my newest fairy tale release. It uh, debuted at number 68 on the USA Today bestsellers list a couple weeks ago. I was very excited. Awesome. Um, Congratulations. So Rachel actually makes the soup. I'm also going to offer them a short story called Lamea's Tower. Um, What's the name of it? Lamea's Tower. Okay. It's a Rapunzel retelling. Oh. And it's not available right now, so this will be the only way you can get it at the moment. So Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so, and they need to post it on social media and tag you. And is it going to be under KL Bone? Correct? It is under KL Bone, and all the links are on my expo in my slides. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us and staying up with us. We really appreciate you being here. I thank you. Okay, so the last one that we have is actually mine. Um, so I am giving away my Holiday Vice trilogy. And um, in order to get that, what I need you to do is to post a picture. My, my, um, my tagline is catch the wave of passion, mystery, and suspense. So what I want is a selfie of you actually catching an imaginary wave on a surfboard in your living room. And whether that means that you're wiping out, you're hanging 10, or you're sitting on your bum, just flash me a hang, uh, hang, hang loose sign. And uh, then we will, um, you'll be eligible for my Holiday Vice Trilogy. And now don't forget, in order to get um, eligible for the um, mug tree with the reader's coffee mugs, you need to do all of the authors. So I'll be sifting through, making sure you did all of the authors, including our um, jewelry, Soul Stone. So make sure that you do all of those and we'll try to put it in the comments of what you need to do for each author. Thank you very much for joining us for our first online Readers and Readers at Home 2020 um, and our scavenger hunt. Awesome. Thank you, Kim, so much for doing this tonight. This was so much fun. Um, I enjoyed I, seeing everybody <laughs> online, at least. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so you guys can go ahead and stop into some of the um, authors' booths. They're all open right now in the expo. Um, and then also make sure you join us at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central in the Fresh Fiction pop-up shop booth. We're going to be doing a little mix and mingle in there so you can come and chat with us and share your screen and just um, enjoy the uh, time that we have together before we get started next next week, next tomorrow. So, yes, Kim, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. And we will see you guys soon. Okay. Bye.